So we've been asked to make a very difficult decision, one that's been made only once before in the history of our state. You need to know that we're here today as part of a very long process, no matter how it feels, not a rush to judgment. My, my position on the state takeover is, is such that I don't think it's a necessary step to help Holyoke. I think Holyoke needs resources. I think there are things that we can do to improve our schools, but a state receivership is not the answer. The last thing I would like to do is you need to understand that these are our students, our schools, and our city. And that's exactly what we should say. Thank you. When I spoke in front of the board today, what I told them is that this is a chance for them to show compassion and to really create a foster and foster a working relationship with Holyoke as opposed to threatening them with a state takeover. When you threaten somebody, you automatically put them in a defensive position. Whereas when you offer assistance, when you offer help, when you give a lending hand, people see you in a different light. And that's what I was hoping the state would do. I, I am against receivership for many reasons. Um, and uh, when you talk about the prospect, um, I'm really concerned. It feels to me like this decision was made in advance. Um, it feels to me like um, you know the powers that be have been pushing the issue, um, and if they've been doing some advocating and lobbying down here on the local front, and are kind of uh, pushing receivership onto us. We've done more in the past two years than we've done in the previous ten years. I've been on the board for six years now. I've worked with two. Um, superintendents. All the things that we're trying to do now, we've been talking about, but they haven't done because of um, excuses that they've made up. Now that we've hired Dr. Piaz, he listened to us and he was able to get things done. We changed the way that we do the budget in Holyoke. We use a zero balance budget. So we start our priorities, our student services. That's where we start. We've cut central office. People are saying, why cut teachers? Why not cut the people in central office? We cut it in half. We've done so much in the past two years, and we've seen so much uh, progress, and we're doing such good for this community. Now, for them to come and say that they want to take over the city and take away local control it is definitely not the time. We have this under control ourselves. We're making great progress. And as you've heard from the people and seen the turnout, for the schools, you know we're doing a great job and most of the people, everybody here, uh, wants us to keep local control. I think that we're being railroaded into this. I think that it's created a lot of feelings of helplessness across the city and a little bit of panic, or a lot of panic across the city. I don't think that it's necessary. I don't think that anybody that the state puts in place in Holyoke can do as good a job as, as what our, stu our teachers are doing, and they certainly couldn't do any better. Um, I'm wondering about the ability of the board to be objective um, in regards to this issue of receivership. Um, one of the concerns is, is that um, the commissioner um, of education, Night, he resides or governs um, or chairs a governing body um, that has developed the alternative testing called PARC. And then from PARC, um, you know, that is the plan that that's going to, um, how do you say, replace the current MCAS system. And there's been a push to do that already across the state of Massachusetts. So, you know, you know, it, it, you know, so you begin to question whether or not um, there's a hidden agenda here or there's monies and powers that are pushing um, this agenda of receivership here in Holyoke. Some of our students have walked out of school at one time, Some of, and I see what they're saying. Some of them chose to stay in school because they thought that staying in school and passing the MCAS is a better way to communicate to the commissioner. Um, the community has come together businesses, everyone. The city council wrote letters in support of local control. The Chamber of Commerce wrote letters in support of local control. Western New England University had sent a letter that was signed by at least 20 professors to the commissioners stating that we should re retain local control because we have a partnership with them as well. We have so much support from so many people right now that state receivership is just out of the question. We really don't need it. We don't need it. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, one of the things that I learned growing up um, and when I was educating myself um, in the Holyoke school system is that you shouldn't believe um, everything you hear, read, um, um, in the public, in the media, and so forth. And this is an issue that I think that is of an importance um, because 
Um, there's a lot of negativity that's spewed out there about Holyoke as a community, and the reality is we couldn't be more united around this issue. 800 people coming out to a forum like this is evidence of that. Um, oftentimes, uh, the media um, is slanted. Um, I, uh, some of the coverage uh, that has happened um, on this issue is very slanted, and I think that politicians um, have encouraged that and have influenced that by uh, putting out statements, by um, courting the press, so to speak. Um, but the reality is, if you want to know what's happening, come to our community, ask community members, ask residents, ask the organizers, ask, ask the activists, ask the students, ask the teachers. Um, they will let you know what's really happening behind the scenes. It's, it, there's a, a larger...